culture of productive cooperation. So, backtrack a second. In the industrial era, this is, so when Karl Marx is writing about cooperation in capitalist society, for those of you on that sort of line, it's chapter 13 of volume one of Capital. Um, if you need page numbers, uh, I could work with that. Um, so what Marx, it's an unusual chapter because it's, there's, it's first of all the only time in Capital where Marx talks about the capitalist as intrinsic to the process of production. Like usually the capitalist is a parasite of some sort, you know, useless. In that chapter, the capitalist is necessary because the capitalist is the one who guarantees cooperation. The capitalist uh, creates the factory site. In fact, it trains and forces workers to cooperate, you know, through discipline, through routines, etc. He says, like a general on the battlefield, or like a conductor of an orchestra. Like, interestingly different metaphors. Anyway, so that's the one thing odd thing about it. But it's also the chapter in which Marx finds the most hint of communism within capitalist society. Because the cooperation that's created within capitalist society is already a foreshadowing the possibility of something different. An un, an un, an uncoerced, uncommanded cooperation. So I would say, this is the rather large claim about that, in industrial, whereas in industrial production, uh, cooperation is imposed from above, in social production, cooperation tends to arise from below. And that's what I, you know, one thing I find really promising about it. I don't mean always, and it doesn't mean that if you work as a hospice nurse or I give a variety of other examples, I don't know, you work at 7-Eleven or something, it doesn't mean that you're not exploited. In fact, you're in many ways exploited way worse. It's, in fact, having your emotional life be something you do for work is in some ways a much, you could think of it as a much worse exploitation. So I don't mean this is you're unexploited. What I'm rather trying to identify is a capacity or power, like the power to create social networks. I don't mean uh, social media networks. I mean networks like social relations among people. That seems to me super um, important. Okay, so let me go on to the second one, which is maybe looking at this from the other side. In the same area, yeah, here. Please. Set a precedent on tricky questions. I know, no, I, I like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so, are you claiming that this is new? The hospice worker, the 7-Eleven person who has a, it's expected to engage, you know, yeah. the people who come in um, to the store. Because I'm thinking of, um, you know, uh, African-American women and, you know, at least if the, the maid or the domestic servant in the house um, you know, if she doesn't wash the floor and the windows and whatever, then she's not going to get paid. But what she's really being paid for, yes. right, is that supposed yeah. mothering capacity that yeah. she's bringing. To not only to the children, also to, to the household. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and sort of doing this kind of maternal-ish work, right? right. And, I mean, we can take it to the level of Mammy in terms of stereotype and Hollywood and all of that, or we can just sit right there in terms of, you know, somebody doing domestic labor right. for a wage, a really small one, right? right? Is is not going to do well in that job unless she is giving of herself, right, in this emotional right. sense. And so, but it, it seemed to me that you were you were positing this kind of work as a as a new sort of aspect of right. capitalism. I'm trying to figure that out. Okay. Well, it's not. It is definitely. Can I? I can talk without the microphone. Every because I realize everyone's hearing Aaron, so I can do it right. Um, so. Right, you're absolutely right that it's not new. What, would, what the claim of novelty is, is that it's now the uh, center of gravity of the capitalist economy, whereas previously it was in some sense peripheral, peripheral specifically to the industrial production. So, and that, so that too is not to say that people don't still work in factories. Absolutely, globally, the number of people working in factories has not gone down, it's probably increased. But, but it's, uh, the, the, the claim is that you know, I got your attention. Uh, yeah, but like I said, the claim the claim is is a qualitative one about its importance within the capitalist system. So in some sense, okay, this is the, maybe jumping to too historical framework, but it, it seems to me similar to the kinds of arguments that were going on among uh, European political economists or philosophers in the 
early 19th century or 18th century about agriculture. Like it was a previous paradigm that said all wealth comes from the earth. And so in the, in the like when Marx is writing in 1850, it's not like most people are in the factories. Like very few people are actually in the factories. What he was saying is that there's a tendency for industrial 